All right, so when I was a kid, I, I knew that I was creative, but sometimes I'd get frustrated that I wasn't creative in all the ways I wanted to be creative. Like, I'd see a canvas and paintbrushes and paint and think to myself, I can do that. But then I'd start, and anything that I painted looked more like Picasso on a bad day than Van Gogh's Starry Night. Yeah, I'm not very good at painting. And if you look at your kids, I bet at least a few of them feel the same way. They hate being on stage, they have no rhythm, can't play an instrument, or like me, can't paint or draw very well. For whatever reason, they've been taught to think about creativity in terms of arts and crafts, music and dance, but there's something about creativity that we all need to remember. We're not creative because of our talents. We're creative because that's how God made us. He designed each of us with a mind to think beyond ourselves and imagine the possibility for, well, anything. And it's our imagination that actually suggests that God really does exist. Our imagination suggests there is definitely a creator who has designed each of us with a unique ability. It's God's image in us that gives us the capacity to see beyond the ordinary and to understand a dimension of life that a dog or a tree or a whale just can't experience. We're different from every other species because we are made in God's image and our imagination is a reflection of his image. That's why we wanna spend the next few weeks talking about creativity. This month, we'll talk about creativity like this. Imagining what you could do because you are made in God's image. We hope to spark creativity this month by reminding every child how God's indescribable creativity can show up in each one of them. In week one, we'll go back to the very beginning. We'll see how God is the author of creation. From the tiniest molecule to the largest planet out in space, God put it all into motion. And it's all pretty incredible. Bottom line, there's no limit to God's creativity. In week two, we'll take a look at something Paul wrote in Ephesians 2.10. He talks about how we are God's creation. He created us to belong to Jesus. He created us to do good in the world. We hope kids start to realize just how God created them to do something awesome. Bottom line, God created you so you can be creative. Then in week three, we'll spend time looking more closely at the story of Esther. Esther had no idea how God would use her when she was chosen to become queen of Persia. God put her in that role to rescue his people from Haman's plot. And like Esther, God has something big in mind for each one of us as well. Bottom line, God created you for a purpose. Then in week four, we'll see what happens when four friends put their heads together. When Jesus was coming to town, four friends decided to stop what they were doing and bring their sick friend to Jesus to be healed. They went above and beyond to make sure he could see Jesus. Bottom line, God created you to work with others. We finish out the month with something Jesus said as part of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus asks us to use our creativity to be salt and light in the world around us. Jesus wants to use us to point others to him. Bottom line, God created you to share his story. Everything we are saying about God's creativity can be summed up in our memory verse found in Psalm 145, three. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. In this Psalm, David reminds us that God is so big, so amazing, that no one can possibly grasp how incredible he is. Thankfully, God sent Jesus to show us just how amazing he is. And that demands we worship him with everything we have. Every parent, every leader wants the children they influence to live their lives to the fullest. When we really believe we are made in the image of God, we believe in a new set of possibilities. Our imagination is unleashed and God can use how he wonderfully made us to point people to him.